Today's topic is 2.3, the cosine law, and that's on pages 114 to 125 in your text. Our curriculum outcome is to demonstrate understanding of the cosine law and sine law, including the ambiguous case. Our lesson objectives, number one, to be able to derive the law of cosines, and number two, to be able to use the law of cosines to answer problems involving triangles that are not right triangles. So the law of sines, which we developed the other day, only works in a couple of different situations. In the first situation, if we were given side, side angle, so two sides and the next angle, and that was uh, the ambiguous case as well, so we always had to check for the ambiguous case. And our second situation was if we were given angle, side, angle, we could use the two angles to find the third and then use the law of sines. Now, if we're given all three sides, which we call side, 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 or if we're given two sides and the angle between them, which is side, angle, side, we can't use the law of sines. So we're going to have to develop another law called the law of cosines. So what we've got here is our triangle. So we're going to label it ABC. And we know that this line here is what we call the height. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to label all the sides. So this is side C, this is side A, and this entire side is side B. Now, if I call this side X, just from uh, angle A to the height, where the height comes down, then this one here is going to be B minus X, and that's pretty important. So we're just going to break it up into a bunch of little equations and then combine those equations. So first I'm going to use the law of, co or not the law of cosines, but just cosine of your angle A is your adjacent, which is X, over your hypotenuse, which is C. And then I'm going to solve for X, and this is going to come in handy in a second. So if I solve for X, I get cosine of A multiplied by side C. The next thing I'm going to do is uh, use the Pythagorean theorem, and I'm going to call this uh, I'm going to use it with the c squared equals h squared plus x squared. And that's going to come in handy in a second. And the next thing I'm going to do is use the same Pythagorean theorem, but with a h and b minus x. So a squared equals h squared plus b minus x squared. So what I'm going to do now is uh, expand this part right here. So I get a squared equals h squared plus, now b minus x squared is b squared minus 2bx plus x squared. And I can make some substitutions. I know that h squared up here, I could solve for h. It is c squared minus x squared is what h squared equals. So I can now plug that into here. So I get a squared equals uh, c squared minus x squared plus b squared. And now I have my minus 2bx. Well, let's get rid of the x by making this substitution here, where x is equal to cos a plus c. So that's negative 2b cos a times c, sorry. And then I also have a plus x squared. Now, a few things cancel off. I get this positive x squared and this negative x squared canceling off. And in the end, I end up with my law of cosines, which says a squared equals we're just going to rearrange it a little bit, make it alphabetical. So b squared plus c squared minus 2bc cosine a. And this is your law of cosines. We can use this when we have three sides, a, b, and c, and we could solve for that angle a. Or we could use it when we have two sides, like b and c, and the included angle, which would be angle a, then we could use it to solve for the uh, third side. So here's our example. It says Nina wants to find the distance between two points A and B on opposite sides of a pond. So we've got a point here A and a point here B. She uh, locates a point C that's 35.5 meters away from A. So she has a different point here, point C. It happens to be 35.5 meters away from A and 48.8 meters away from B. If the angle C is 54 degrees, so this angle right here is 54 degrees, determine the distance AB, so the distance from A to B, to the nearest tenth of a meter. So when we just developed the law of cosines, we found that it was A squared equals B squared plus C squared minus 2BC cosine of A. We're going to put in different letters. We're looking for side X, so we're going to put that as X squared. Um, B and C are the two other sides, so that's 35.5 squared plus 48.8 squared minus 2 times 35.5, 48.8, because those were B and C in this formula. 
multiplied by cosine of the angle that's opposite the side that we're looking for, and that would be cosine 54. So if we expand this thing, 35.5 squared is 1260.25, 48.8 squared is 2381.44, and negative 2 times 35 times 48.8 is negative 3464.8 times cosine 54. If we multiply this number by cosine 54 and subtract it from these two numbers, we get x squared equaling 1605.13. And if we take the square root of both sides to get x, we get 40.1 meters. And here's our last example. It says a triangular brace has side lengths 14 meters, 18 meters, and 22 meters. Determine the measure of the angle opposite the 18 meter side to the nearest degree. So if I just draw a triangle, I've got a 14 meter, an 18 meter, and a 22 meter. And I'm looking for this side right here, or this angle right here, I'll call it x. So the law of cosines that we developed says a squared equals b squared plus c squared minus 2bc cosine a. And the big thing about this is that the side that you're looking for, or the angle that you're looking for, are always on opposite side of the equations. So since I'm looking for angle x, I am going to put the side opposite angle x on the left hand side. So that makes that 18 squared. It means the other two sides are 14 squared plus 22 squared, and it doesn't matter what order those go in because you're just squaring them and adding them. And then we get 2 times 14 times 22 cosine of this angle that we don't know. So what I usually do is I usually manipulate this thing and move everything to the left hand side and then just use my calculator in one step. So I got 18 squared. I'm going to subtract both the 14 squared and the 22 squared. And then I will just be left with this. And since that's multiplied by cos x, I will divide both sides by that. So I get negative 2 times 14 times 22. And that equals cosine x. So in my calculator, I'd go 18 squared minus 14 squared minus 22 squared. And in the calculator that I use, I would then just hit equals. And then I would divide by negative 2, and then divide by 14, then divide by 22. And I get cosine x equaling a ratio of 0 0.577922, blah, blah, blah. And then I would take second function cosine of both sides and find out that my angle is 55 degrees. Now, the good thing about the law of cosines is that there's no such thing as the ambiguous case because if cosine, if your ratio for cosine is positive, it's definitely in the first quadrant because everything's positive there. And if your ratio for cosine is negative, then it's actually in the second quadrant because the only thing that's positive there is sine. And since we're dealing with a triangle, these bottom two quadrants don't really apply because those are angles that are greater than 180 degrees. So in summary, the law of cosines is used when you're given side, 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 like three sides, or side, angle, side, so two sides with the angle in between them. And you don't have to worry about interpreting your answer like you did with the law of sines when you were finding an angle, because if your ratio is positive, we know it's an acute angle, so in between 0 and 90. And if your ratio is negative, and then we know that it's an obtuse angle, because that means it's in the second quadrant. And your calculator will always give you the correct measurement, unlike the law of sines where we had to use reference angles. So your assignment on pages 119 to 125, good luck and we'll see you in class.